Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets. This is episode 0023. Today we have Neil Butler. He's an Australian business owner. He's a transformaginist. He has a podcast that he hosts. He's a sports commentator and a radio presenter. And he says he looks through life through untypical eyes. He's in a town called Greelong, approximately 70 kilometers away from Melbourne, Australia. His business works at changing the way people see things. He owns his own radio station called goradio.live which streams across australia 24 7 playing the very best music of the past 70 years a little bit of unabashed advertising for him during the winter months he also likes to broadcast second tier australian rules football via the station on saturdays and sundays he is a podcast a host he has a podcast called untypical thoughts wow pod Two Blokes Chatting, and 100 Towns. And he also provides services on behalf of other organizations and business. He is the founder of Transformagination. I want to welcome you here today, Neil. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Gary. And I'm tired just listening to all that. Now, it just <laughs> everything about that was perfect, except the town is called Geelong. And some people who are listening might recognize that as the name of one of the AFL football sides in this part of the world. Not the team I support, but a team nonetheless. Thank you very much. I, I do try to speak English every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Just put those teeth back in to be fine. Yes, yes, that's right. I, I oftentimes think about how English is spoken in different countries and how Winston Churchill, who had an American mother, as well as his British father, came over to the United States in the Second World War and basically reported to the American Congress that English is a language that divides the two countries. And that's basically how it really is. So let me oh, ask and in, you this. And, oh, yeah, sorry. Go, go, no, go but ahead, in, in a country like Australia, we have the same problem across Australia. Just, you know, from the northern tips to the western tip, it's just, yeah, anyway, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this. What's the one thing you wish you had known before you became an entrepreneur here? I think the thing that I most would like to say to that person starting off the business, Gary, is that I belong. There's a sense with a lot of people who are entrepreneurs. In Australia, we've got 2.1 million small businesses and there's only 27 million people live here. So it's a really high proportion of people working in that in that field. And some people I've spoken to, I've coached, say, I just don't feel like I belong in this space. And I think there's this feeling of imposter syndrome mm -hmm. that because I'm not an entrepreneur who now runs a business that employs 15,000 people and turns over millions of dollars every year, that I don't belong. Well, you do, and I do. It's just that I'm working in a different market. And I think the primary difference between me and them is only the fact that more people know about them. I got you. I think it's very interesting that a lot of people come on board and they are solo entrepreneurs in the beginning. Yes. And I think they're shell-shocked sometimes by how much work they have to do to put in and how mm. much responsibility they suddenly took on. But the truth of the matter is when they learn how to be the entrepreneur and if they are able to understand how to market themselves, it isn't long before they start hiring people and start to feel like a real boss. I think it's also the fact that the TV shows that you see and, and the podcast you hear and stuff often talk about these overnight sensations who have in fact become an overnight sensation over a period of 25 years. And you know, you're not going to get, what's that guy's name in your part of the world? Greg Wallace, is it? That keeps running around in factories and talking about how factories are set up. You know, he's not going to do a TV show and say, well, in the first year, Neil was a complete and utter abject failure. In the second year, he then bought a car and had to send it back because it was repossessed. They only talk about the bit that's sexy and the bit that's successful. And so there's this sense that I don't belong in this arena when in fact you do. What, what I find really interesting about people who become online entrepreneurs is the fact that 90% of them seem to have gone in one path and then found that that wasn't the right way to go. And they wandered from one way to another way until they found where their niche really was and where yes. they could excel. Yeah, a number of them, I think, have as their theme song that U2 hit, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. <laughs> and I suspect that, you know, and I, I haven't necessarily, I think I've kind of settled in the world of podcasting and broadcasting, but ask me tomorrow because it may well change by then. <laughs> Subject to change. <laughs> so what would you consider your greatest 
I don't like failure, but it's a word I use. But I, I guess I'm meaning your greatest learning experience in the process of being an entrepreneur. And what did you learn from it? I guess I've made some notes. You'll be surprised now. For those who are listening and playing at home, Gary does provide us with some ideas as to what we're going to talk about. So I have actually given this some thought. So if you're thinking, gee, he's pretty good at responding to questions. I've had all day to think about it. I guess the first thing is I don't acknowledge failure. Failure doesn't exist. Not failure is not an option or whatever that film was. There's a chap who, I'm not sure how big he was in the US and the UK, but he was certainly massive in Australia. He was a New York based professor called Julius Sumner Miller. And he had a television show that he used to host in Melbourne, in Sydney, I think, but it was shown on the ABC in the 60s and 70s called Why Is It So? He had one of those really whining New York accents. He'd go, why is it so? And he used to say, there is no such thing as a failed experiment, only an experiment that gives you a different response to the one you were expecting. Because failure by definition is, have I achieved a predetermined standard or a predetermined answer? If the answer is no, I have failed. No, 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 no. What you've done is you've created something different to what you're expecting. Let's explore that to see what we can find. So if you think about failure, I don't, I've never failed. Uh, and that sounds a bit up myself, but I don't mean it that way. I guess if someone said to me, what's the one thing that you could have done that you didn't do, if you could put in that context, I was fortunate enough. <laughs> Yeah, let's use, but we'll run with fortune enough to have been considered to be a gifted child when I was, you know, in my primary school years. And therefore, if I had to put my head down and tail up, I probably could have achieved a whole lot more academically than I did. But if I did, I wouldn't be on the adventure I'm on now because I would have been a lawyer or a doctor or whatever. And I kind of would have had to stay in that because that's the predetermined path. That's bollocks. I, like, I don't want to play that game. I was a school teacher for five years. And then since that time, it's just kind of been a roller coaster, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Absolutely. I think people who get into the box, stay in the box, have discovered that that box is actually a coffin. And yep. it's the people yep. who learn to get out of the box that really go on the adventures in life. Because that's advice? an expression I tend to use is, we don't think outside the box in my company. We set mm -hmm. fire to the box. Absolutely. Great, great use of words and imagery. I really like that. Don't so, step outside of your comfort zone. Take a flying leap out of it. That's the kind of stuff <laughs> I work with. <laughs> that's right. That's good. That's good. So what advice would you give somebody that's kind of like sniffing around thinking about being a digital entrepreneur? What would you suggest? Well, the first one, there's two, th I've got two answers to this. So let me run with both of them. I won't keep you forever. But the first one is a decidedly Australian thing to say. And that is have a crack, give it a go, have a go. Don't die wondering. You're a long time dead and you don't want to spend those last years thinking, you know what, if I had of only, I, I think the saddest words that you could possibly hear someone saying is, I wish I had have. Very sad. So have a crack. And when you think about entrepreneurism, one of two things is going to happen. It's either going to be successful or it's not going to be successful. He said, avoiding the F word because it's not going to fail. We don't fail. Nothing fails. If you are fortunate enough to live with someone who has some income coming into your house so that the financial pressure is reduced slash eliminated, take six months and have a crack. And if it all turns to custard, what are you lost? Apart from that nagging feeling of only I had have done it. The other one is more of a sporting analogy. And that is if you swing the racket enough times, you'll hit one eventually. And I must, I must give some credit to a mate of mine who's actually at Melbourne's highest rating breakfast radio program host. I'm fortunate enough to know him. And he said to me about some of the stuff I'm doing. He said, look, you just keep swinging the racket, mate. You'll hit one eventually. And I think we spoke off air before about the fact that a lot of people say, I'll, I'll try, I don't know, I'll buy a shop and I'll run the shop. And if that doesn't work, I've always never cut out to be an entrepreneur. They'll, you know, no, no, keep going. Don't, don't stop. Keep swinging that racket. Eventually you'll get, you'll, you'll get one. And I think that's a really important component of it as well. I think people need to understand that making mistakes, not doing well, as long as you learn from it, is the learning curve of becoming yep. successful. Very few people make it the first time with whatever they're doing. I, I think it's really interesting when you think about big names today, you know, like Edison, the light bulb, mm. 10,000 experiments that didn't go the way he thought it would go. And they were kind of mocking him. He says, well, I know 10,000 ways not to make a light bulb. That's right. You know, yeah. and, and that's the attitude. That's the attitude. That's right. And the question does exist, doesn't it? Because in Australia, what we do talk about is the fact that when it hails, it hails the size of golf balls. I'm wondering 
what happened in 1355 before golf was invented, how they described how big the hailstones were. Well, it's a bit the same. Do you reckon Edison had a light bulb moment? Or the person who invented something before Edison invented the light bulb, what sort of moment did he or she have? Because, you know, anyway, it is just one of those musings that my brain goes with occasionally. Well, my brain muses with just the concept of how did he think of a light bulb? <laughs> what, and was it a light bulb moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just incredible. So what would you find to be the best resources to recommend to someone who wants to jump on this road of entrepreneurship? Incredibly good sense of humor and resilience. Parking those two, other people. I think there's a, a sense that says, if I'm going to be a successful podcaster, for example, don't ask a podcaster, whatever you do, because you're giving away some of your ideas and you, you're admitting that you're not as good as them. No, nah, that's bollocks as well. You ask other people, people who have been there, people who have, there's that F word again, who have failed and found a new way through. So there's that there's that bit. I think in, in what I'm doing, your technical expertise is also something that's necessary. So I've got a shop nearby here. I'm getting a shout out, Music Workshop in Geelong. They are my technical experts when it comes to microphones and sound gear. So identify experts and utilize them. And of course, there's this other thing we've got in Australia, I don't know whether you've got it over in your part of the world, it's called Google. And quite, I find that, uh, but the trick with Google for me, and it's not for everybody, I get that, is if I'm making something or I'm learning a new skill, I like to go and, and give it a crack. There's that expression again. And when I hit the end of the bit I understand, then go to Google. Rather than sitting down to Google and getting all the instructions and all that preparation and, and then going and doing it. Now, that's just the way my head works and I don't know whether it's a good thing or not, but Google is a massive resource as well. I will tell you that one of the things that I have found since I've entered into the digital world is that very successful people will take time to talk to you. It's just a sense of they want to give back because they become successful. I have, you know, when I was in the brick and mortar world, people were very guarding of how they got there. The, the pie was only a certain size. And in a digital universe, everybody knows that it's expanding every day. So even though your piece of pie might be smaller, it was a bigger pie. So you yeah. get more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I think, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough now through the, the platform that you and I met through, that is to say a thing called Matchmaker. It's, it's not that kind of Matchmaker, folks. <laughs> it's podcast guests and podcast <laughs> programs. But we've got an opportunity. I've been asked a lot to speak, and that's a, a more flattering than anything else that people want to know what I'm talking about. But I think I would be, what's the word I'm looking for? I'd be foolish, and I'd be so conceited if I thought to myself, look, you know, I'm a bit above all these other people. It's about giving back because I'm learning stuff from you and you're learning stuff from me, and our two podcasts are going to be better for this conversation. I think so too, and I'm grateful for it. So what three sources, people, authorities were most help along your way? So on a personal, people I know personally, three people who have influenced me the most, you know, discounting parents and all that sort of stuff that, you know, the school teachers and everything else. My two kids, I have a daughter who is 30 and I have a son who's 26. My daughter, when I say 30, she turns 30 on Saturday very soon. And sometime in the two weeks immediately after her 30th birthday, she is going to designate me to be a grandfather, which is exciting news. So she and her brother, so Lucy and her brother, Sam, have obviously had a massive influence on who I am today and, and they should be acknowledged. Another bloke in the whole world will know, except maybe some people who have been involved in community radio, a gentleman called John Farmer, and we sadly lost John about a month ago. He was so encouraging to Lucy when she wanted to get involved in radio. And one night when her co-host didn't turn up, she had that look of a deer in the headlights. And she said, dad, you're going to have to help me here. And John happened to be listening. And he rang me the next day and said, mate, we need to give you a radio program. And uh, well, no, first of all, how long have you been doing radio? Never. Okay, we need to give you a radio program. And he gave me a chance and he supported me and he encouraged me and look at me now. I own a radio station. I have my own radio program here in Geelong. I've got podcasts coming out of my ears. So sadly, we lost him, one of the most generous community focused volunteers that I ever had the good fortune to meet and uh, very sadly missed. In terms of famous people or people that I've never met, put it that way, Albert Einstein will get a run a little bit later as well. He gets a bit of a run. I'm actually a qualified physicist and that'll make people who know me laugh. And so therefore he was always something of a hero growing up, if you like. Number two is a chap called Paul McCartney, who was uh, reasonable in the way of music. I am music fanatic, particularly as you mentioned earlier on my radio station, the very best music of the past 70 years. Oh, that was a radio voice, wasn't it? That focuses very much on the 60s, 70s and 80s because that's when the best music was written. And clearly McCartney is the Beethoven of that era. He will be in, in 200 years time, like we're talking about Beethoven and Handel, they'll be talking about Lennon and McCartney. And the third one, I've just made it a catch-all. The radio presenters of the 1970s and 1980s in this town 
one town in Melbourne where I grew up, just inspired me. I desperately wish now that I had gone into radio as a career. And now that I haven't, I thought, stuff it, I'll do it at the age of 58 instead. Well, actually 48 when I started. Well done. It's amazing how people do influence us and, and, and we learn. We just learn. So what's and, the... and I've got to say, just before you go on, I've got to say there is nothing more satisfying than someone saying you've been a massive impact on, you had a massive impact on me. And that fortunately through teaching and coaching has been something I've been very fortunate to have been told by a few people. And that is the reason people do it. You know, they, they want to have a positive impact on other people and it's just a great feeling. It's oftentimes better than the paycheck. In so many ways. And that's good because there isn't one coming in at the moment. There's been yeah. a disease down here called COVID that stopped all that. Well, you know, the thing is the rewards that are intrinsic are the ones that are eternal. The ones that are extrinsic just seem to come and go. So that's where I kind of sit back. So let's talk about what myth about being an online entrepreneur you would like to smash today? Well, if, if my mother was able to hear what I'm about to say, the common myth in my career path has been I can't hold down a job. Uh, and Because in her mind, bless her, she's 88, and my father's 90, and they don't get the concept of entrepreneurship. They think that you go to work when you're 15, 16, 17, whatever it is, or you get a sensible job like a school teacher's job, which I did. And, you know, you stay in that role for the rest of your life. And I got gray hair. That was caused by five years of teaching. But I think that on a more sensible level, you can have a satisfying career without having to make bucket loads of money, sacrifice your family time, other interests, that sort of stuff. I think we're our, our dream, the great Australian dream is what it's always to, is owning your own house on a quarter acre block of land. You know, that, 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 that we've heard that a million times. You don't have to make bucket loads loads of money. And we just mentioned the intrinsic value of, of some of those things. The other thing that a lot of people don't get is that you can actually move between career directions midstream. You don't have to go, well, I was a school teacher when I was 22, so I better stay with it until I'm 65. You can change careers and you can be an entrepreneur. That goes back to that I belong thing. Absolutely correct. People who are willing to explore the people who are willing to take the risk are the ones who are going to get the rewards. When you go work for a paycheck, trading your time for money, you're not taking any risk. It's the person yep. who hired you who's taking all the risk. And yep, absolutely. So, yeah. I, I will share with you that one thing that I've discovered on my entrepreneurial journey isn't so much what I've learned and the learning curve has been huge, but what has happened to me internally as a human being, I have really changed for so much the better. And I would say, indeed, I have become more spiritual. I, I don't know how else to explain it, but I just am different. And people who know me tell me, man, you've really changed. Mm. I think it's a bit about doing what you want to do. There was a, a great song in Australia in 1971 called Because I Love You. And the key part of the chorus is do what you want to do, be what you want to be, yeah. And I think that's a really good, because if you are trying to be somebody else, there's a, it's one of those sort of naff sayings you see on a meme. I want to, I want to be me because everyone else has taken. There's no point trying to be somebody else. And I think if you can find something that you feel is right, then you will be more in touch with yourself. You therefore will become more spiritual. You will become more mellow. I was talking to someone the other day. I think I've lost my temper three times since a particular workshop in 1985, where someone said, act, don't react. And I'm, I'm a better person for what I'm doing, undoubtedly. I guess we could all say we sing a bit of Frank Sinatra in this world. We're doing it our way. You know? That's it. Oh, yeah. I was going to say New York, New York. But yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm hearing you. It's a trivia. My Way is the most requested funeral song in Australia. Is it really? Well, I, I didn't know that. But thank you for sharing Things that Things you learn on trivia. a podcast, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So if you could step into my shoes, the interviewer, yeah. and you're sitting there thinking, I wish that handsome young guy in England would have asked me this question. What question would that be? What do you think of my shoes? No, oh, okay. <laughs> I've been working on that one all day. I thought that was good. Where's the one place you want to visit overseas in an Australia that you haven't yet been to? Interesting question. Mm. That makes the assumption that I haven't been to Australia at some level. No, no, no. And it also oh, makes so the you, assumption it, that I've been. Now, is that the question that, I, that you would be asking me? Is yes, that the whole I'm point going to ask you that question, but okay, I, that's I'm sitting right, thinking that's very interesting. <laughs> so where in Australia should you visit that you've not visited yet? There are two places. <laughs> I can't give you one answer. The northwestern corner of Australia, as people may be aware, Australia's a big place. One of my favorite stories is I had a colleague from Italy who when the pilot on the airplane said, oh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, you've just passed the coastline of Australia. He started packing up 
and about six and a half hours later, he landed in Melbourne. So that northwestern corner of Australia is the furthest part of Australia from me, and I'd love to go up there. I guess the other thing, and people will know about a thing that we used to call Ayers Rock, we now call Uluru in recognition of its indigenous name. It's a, well, the only way to describe it is a bloody great big rock in the middle of central Australia. And it's one of those things you just got to see. You used to go up and climb it. Now it's considered to be an indigenous sacred, sacred area. So no one's allowed to climb it on it anymore. But yeah, it's just one of those things you've got to do as an Aussie. Well, I hope you get to go to both areas and Thank you. Yes, do I will. it soon, you know, yes. while you can really enjoy it. My uh, age, you never know. Tomorrow might be the last yeah. one, you know. Yeah. I went to Ayers Rock and I could climb it back then. Oh, there you go. So you're one ahead of me. Yeah. So there we go. There we go. It's like I stepped on the moon almost, in your opinion. Absolutely. Um, so... Where do people go to find out more information about you? How can they contact you? Because you really are incredibly interesting. <laughs> Untypical, you might say. I, I just should quickly respond to the other half of that other question, whereabouts overseas, but I'd like to go. I'd love to get in a car and drive across the south part of the USA and do Memphis and do Nashville go to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, go to the Johnson Space Center in Texas, go to Galveston, which is 70 miles south of Houston, so I can sing the Glen Campbell song. Where can listeners connect with me? Well, I guess the most likely sensible spot to go is to my website, which is untypical.com.au. So it's typical with the letters UN in front of it, untypical.com.au. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I think LinkedIn, it says that I'm a broadcaster, podcaster, transformaginist. You'll be able to find me, tall, handsome, and Facebook, of course, as well. Okay, very good. And folks, don't grab a pencil or anything. We're going to put those in the show notes. I've got to tell you, I've always had visions of somebody reaching for a pencil and I get sued because <laughs> they're listening to my podcast at the time. So yeah. they will be in the show notes as always. Neil, this is it. This is the time when I give you two minutes uninterrupted to tell the world anything you would like to tell the world. Whatever's on your heart, the time is now yours two minutes he reckons so i'm going to quote einstein and einstein had a poster on my wall growing up that said imagination is more important than knowledge and in my opinion people don't imagine enough if you say imagine they go yeah oh, you know I, I might next thursday i might go and do this now forget about that so often we talk about should get rid of should should not nah, go could not what should we do what could we do start thinking outside the dots no in fact set fire to the dots get out there and start thinking because should says oh we should do this it's kind of against some kind of predetermined standard could says break the shackles start breaking the, the rules if you need to because if you think about it can you imagine if galileo hadn't have gone to the top of the leaning tower of pisa and unfortunate expression but drop his balls over the side of the tower he's gone there and people have made fun of him and yet if he hadn't have gone and imagined what would happen then guess where we'd be now? So it's about people taking risks and imagining things. Einstein said, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Newton, in his first law of physics, a first law of motion says, something will keep going in the same direction at the same speed unless it's acted upon by an external force. Be the external force. Don't just keep doing what you've always done. I know I'm banging on about this, but, but it's so important. People who've done these things have not said, what should we do? They've talked about what could we do? And I'll, just as a last one, I want you to get rid of apostrophes. Now, I'm not talking about possessive apostrophes that says Gary's headphones or Neil's good looks or whatever. I'm talking about contracted words, do not becoming don't, will not becoming won't. It is almost impossible. I've really tried hard to find a word that's got a, a contracted apostrophe in it that is a positive word. Every one of those words is a negative. I won't, should have, could have, didn't, will not. You know. If you use the full words, you've got to make the conscious decision to use the word not. I do not want to do this. Not I don't want to do it. I will not do it. As distinct from I won't do it. To me, it's about trying to be definitive. If you're going to put constraints around yourself, make sure you're doing it deliberately. Is that two minutes? Two and a half, but I'm going to let you get away with it. That was really good. Ladies and gentlemen, there was a whole shipload of golden nuggets in that one answer. You got value today. I mean, there's been value all throughout the day. Neil, I got to tell you, it was an absolute pleasure to meet you, to have you on this podcast today. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude this episode of Gary's Glorious Golden Nuggets. We've had Neil Butler as our guest 
awesome gentleman, truly awesome. I want you to know that we are really grateful for those of you who have subscribed to the podcast. Please share the podcast with other people. We look forward to you on our next podcast next week. Thank you. Thanks, Gary.